Part 3 John has applied to train as a teacher and is being interviewed. In this stage of the interview, the interviewer will discuss John's previous studies and work experiences. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 25. Listen carefully to the first part of the conversation and answer questions 21 to 25. Hello. Uh, come in and take a seat. <laughs> you are uh, John Evans? Yes, I am. Well, uh, as I'm sure you're aware, the purpose of this part of the interview is to go over your CV and talk a little further about your previous studies and experiences. Yes. So, your first degree was in French, of course. Yes, with a minor in film studies. Hmm. An interesting combination. Mostly French films, presumably? Well, European cinema in general, but with a bias towards French cinema. Ah. And your degree took four years? Yes. In the third year, I was an exchange student at Bruges University in Belgium. Ah. I was there for a full academic year, nine months. Hmm. Right. Well, you graduated two years ago, and then you, uh, you took some time out, as it were. Yes, I spent six months as a volunteer working on restoring historic buildings in France. Oh. Was that with a well-known organisation? They're called Restoration Vacations here, but they operate under different names in several countries. I think they're quite well known. Hmm. So, uh, it was a six-month vacation, really? No, I went for a week but really liked it, and I got asked to stay on as a translator. Oh. Because I could speak French quite well, it was my job to liaise between the owners of the buildings and the English-speaking volunteers. Hmm. That must have been a very enjoyable experience. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 26 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 26 to 30. Well, it was certainly a very enjoyable experience to begin with, but after the first three months or so, I actually got a bit bored. Oh. I was talking about the same things every day. Bricks, cement, window frames, that kind of thing. <laughs> it wasn't really stretching my French. Also, I wasn't getting paid. Just free accommodation and food, plus some pocket money. Oh, I see. So then you started working for a bank in Paris, um, uh, BCFC, I think. Uh, ah, yes. Were you doing entirely translating again? Well, translating was the major part of it, mostly from English into French this time. Official documents, letters, that kind of thing. Much more challenging. But I was also in charge of coordinating the translation work going on in the bank's offices in Switzerland, Belgium and other parts of France. Oh. What did that involve? It was simple, really. I just had to keep track of what had been translated in each office. To save wasting time having the same document translated twice in different offices. So, uh, you stayed there for a year and a half, and then you left. Uh, why was that? Simple. To apply for this course. I see. Why give up a secure job in Paris to train as a teacher here? I've always imagined that I'd be a teacher, really. I loved being in Paris, but I wouldn't want to spend the rest of my life working for a bank. Huh. Do you think your experiences in France will help you as a teacher of French? It certainly helped my French, and my experiences certainly gave me a much better understanding of French culture, mm. although that may not be of enormous use when it comes to standing up in front of a class of British 13-year-olds. <laughs> Perhaps not. <laughs> uh, well, uh, thank you very much. The next stage of the interview will be conducted by my colleague in room 207. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers.